I've got a book for you that will pique your interest. It's titled uh, The Confessioner by Claudia Amy. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and to the review of The Confessioners by Claudia Amy. This is a fantastic book that really piqued my interest when I read it. It is a book that is amazingly written and has a blend of it talking about the Argentina Dirty War. When I first started reading the book, it is very pulling to me. From the first chapter to the second chapter to the third one was quite amazing. And I love to say that I love the setting of the book. It reads quite amazingly. It reads quite cynically and it is very very wholesome but before i move into the review my review of the book is actually gonna be a spoiler free as usual i won't be talking too much about the book i'm just gonna be giving you a short video book recommendation for you to have an idea of what claudia amy has had to communicate in this fantastic book actually while i read it i never believed that this is a fiction story it reads like something that is very real true like a historical book or something like that. Before I proceed in my review, I'd love to read to you the synopsis of the book that's directly from the book description page on Amazon. Mita de Savo and her husband, Abato, refugee of the dirty war in Argentina, owned their life to wealthy American Julia Parks, who rescued them from the horror of the junta and offered a new life in Rock, California. Julia, confronted with a late in life pregnancy, asks the DeSavos to adopt the baby with their dead condition that not return to Argentina until baby Francisca is grown. Though aware of the extraordinary sacrifice, the promise we require, the DeSavo have no honorable choice but to accept. The search for their own granddaughter will have to wait as will meet us born in desire to bring to justice the military officer who destroyed her family. A generational story that skillfully illuminates the resilient lives of character touched by loss and betrayal, loved ones stolen in the night and the search for a bet for a bet mother hidden in plain sight. The confessioner is a compelling range of how war and love thousands of miles apart create trauma that ripples through two generation and emerges as love, understanding and forgiveness. You know, that is what you stand to experience reading through this fantastic book. That is what you stand to gain reading through this amazing book. Actually, I love to say that the book is very emotional. Some part of it got me very much. You know, I'm just an emotional being and sometimes when I read books, I love books that are able to pull me into the ocean of my own emotion. I love books that made me feel empathy, feel, you know, sorry for the characters and, you know, love so and ate other, admire these and ate other. And Claudia Amy did a great job writing The Confessional. I love to say it's one of those fantastic books that I've ever read. It is fantastically written. It has a bit touching into the Argentina death war. It has a bit of it depicting some sort of violence, torture, especially with Mita's experience in ESMA. It has a bit of it touching into reality. And I love to say that I need to praise the author's writing style, especially the part that has to do with the torture in ESMA as told from Mita's characterization. I couldn't believe how the author could come up writing, describing the torture, the agony, the anguish that these women pass through. It is very so heart wrenching. It is gut wrenching. It is sad, emotional, and very pulling. So. This book actually details the life of families torn apart. Well, I'd love to first say that I love the characterization because there are no much character in the book. And I love the fact that the story is very deep in a way that it can, you know, contain all the character and make you yearning for more, wanting to flip over the next pages and to know what is coming up next as the book proceeds. 
The book detailed the life of Mita. Well, I first love to start from Mita's characterization because to my own perception, I think there are a lot of protagonists in the book. But I love to take it one after the other. I'll talk from the side of Mita. I'll talk from the side of Julia. I'll talk from the side of Francisca and other character there. So the book actually detailed the life of family torn apart. I love to start from this point whereby there's a particular early morning, like around 4.45, whereby the family of Mita, the Sabo, was actually attacked in, in an early morning by some gangs of soldiers. You know, this actually happened in Argentina. It happened in Bruno Harry. So this particular day, the soldiers came inside the house and attack the Desavo. Mita actually have a daughter called Teresa, and Teresa has a daughter called, you know, Christiana. Teresa is Mita's daughter, and Christiana is Mita's granddaughter. So when these soldiers came inside, and they took Teresa, which is Mita's daughter, away, together with her child, Christiana, which also happened to be Mita's granddaughter. And this is how the soldiers took the family member from the disciples and Abato tried his very best to stop them but he couldn't really do much. But I love to say that the disciples are not the only one be affected by this war. Other people have their own, you know, situation, have their own story to tell. And when Mita's friend, that's Amanda, came visiting her, she told her own story. She told the story of the mothers whose children were taken away from them, whose daughters were kidnapped, while some of them were, they were taken to a mercilessly raped, tortured, being made to face quite a lot of horrible, you know, experiences. At some point, Mita took it up upon herself. Sometimes she talked to her husband about her and about her always books that, okay, don't worry, I've spoken to this person, I've spoken to this person, you know, it was once in the Navy, they're going to work on it, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. But Mita has always been saying that you're always bragging about your contact. I want resort. Where is my daughter? Where is my granddaughter? I need to find them. So why the old things was going on? Sometimes they go to the church and I have a bit of, you know, unclarity towards what is actually happening in the Catholic church and the sort of connection that the war in Argentina asked with the church because even when these people run to the church they are not really available to give them all of the support the church is not readily available to solve all of their mystery to provide solutions to their answer and while Mita get to the church sometimes when she get there she would hear the story of other women whose daughter have been kidnapped whose family have been torn apart and she was like I never knew, I thought I'm the only one being affected by the Argentina dirty war. All of this kept unfolding and it was unfolding in a dynamic manner. I need to say that I was quite emotional when I get to hear about Mita's, you know, anguish towards a missing daughter. The way sometimes a battle would try to share up and again she would just come up and said, what is Teresa eating now? And the story kept going on and on and on. Now coming into another transition, Mita, despite all of her, you know, all of her style, she tried her possible best to locate her daughter, to find her granddaughter. All of it proved abortive and there's this certain time that she was going to visit a doctor. She was attacked and she was kidnapped also. She was taken to the ESMA by silly monster, Bastis. You know, I hate Bastis characterization. He's a devil, he's a demon. And he would always order the other gangs, the other soldier to torture the women. And as our meter was tied to the table, she was raped. Just like her daughter was raped and, and whenever he's done raping her he would also invite other soldiers to come and rape her but we're talking about the description of what these women passed through in esma is very terrible and it got me beginning to resonate or to think if this is actually real if this is like you know what actually happened during the Argentina war well I'm not sure and my curiosity is making me to anticipate having a conversation with the author so I can have a conversation around this in ESMA the women fix a lot of torture some people get their head scraped off some people get wrapped moving into the private part some people were molested tortured used iron also to hurt some part of their body their breasts their mouth their 
their funk, they were mixed up, they were, you know, when I actually read this part, it got me feeling uncomfortable. And that's one of the reasons why I need to praise, you know, Amy's writing style here, because it feels as if I was watching a movie, a gut-wrenching movie, and somebody was like, oh my God, that's too hard to write. How did she come up writing that? At some point, I feel uncomfortable reading this section, what happened to these women in ASMA. So, following on from that, or actually before that, there have been protects by these women, you know, for the release of their daughter, for the government to do something about the dirty war. And the scab that most of them had in their head was a sign of solidarity, was a sign to prove to them of their uniqueness, of their unity, even though they were attacked. Now, coming into this section, you know, Mita was made to face torture all on her experience and as such the the soldiers communicated at a battle and told him now we're going to release your wife on one condition we're going to pay a ransom of ten thousand dollars and we'll release her so that she can go ahead and meet you you know about was like how is he going to get the money then he had to put a color crocs to one of his cousins that resides in america that worked for a very wealthy woman recognized in the book as julia parks so this is where Julia come into their life. This is how the characterization of Julia come in place. And Julia was able to pay the $10,000. So when Mita was released, she was released, she was mixed up, she was tortured. She looked like someone who was just coming out of a, ter of course, terrible situation. So when she now gets her head back, she now asked her husband about her, that I was her released. So I now told her of the story of how Julia came in to help them and how she was able to pay the $10,000 ransom. So I was like, then how are we going to pay her back? Then about to answer that, I said, okay, she wanted us to work work as a caretaker in one of her house in the United States. So we're relocating from Argentina to the U.S. So once I get to the U.S., life started freshly. They started working in Julia's house in order to repay the debt. But I think there's a coincidence that happened here. Julia had been pregnant and I think to my own perception of reading the book, she doesn't want the pregnancy. She doesn't want Probably she doesn't want the responsibility of taking care of another kid. She's actually rich, but I think she does not at the time. So Julia was pregnant. When she delivered a baby, she handed it over to the Devanos, that's to meet her, and told her that you're going to take care of my daughter and I'm going to leave you everything you want. I'm going to provide it for, for you, but I'm going to relocate you. I'm going to pay for another house for you in another part of America for you to live together with my daughter. Please take good care of her. Wherever she needs, I'll always be there, but I don't want her to recognize me as a mother. So that's how Mita took on the responsibility of, you know, taking care of Julia's daughter. They come up with a name and they said, okay, let's name her, her Francisca. And this her Francisca lived with Mita and Abato. Well, I love to say that I love Francisca's characterization. She's very tough, rigid, smart, intelligent. This is how you know, Francisca grew up with the perception that, you know, Mita and Abato was, uh, you know, a parent. But it all got to the point whereby Mita was actually having a conversation with someone in Francisca's school. And she had, you know, mistakenly mentioned that she's adopted. So Francisca heard her, though she was very young, she heard her and she asked her, that was a meaning of adopted. She knew actually that they were talking about her. Then Mita told her that adopted means adorable. And this is how, you know, Francisca came up with a swift method of you know once you, once you inculcate an habit in a child they tend to stay with it so there's a day she was playing with a toy and she said oh you adopted and when about to add i said what do you mean how, what do you mean adopted the meter told him of how she got to know about ado adopted in place of adorable and she said she's gonna try and correct her but you know they keep growing and you know, the story keep unfolding on and on and on to the point whereby francisca began to question them and she began to realize that they are really not not a parent despite the fact that sometimes francisca often do not behave you know good to, to meet her that sometimes a meter treated her as if she's her own daughter and of course she she was fine with it but at some point she began to react weirdly i knew from the start that you're not my mind 
mother. That's actually when they told her that she's adopted at the age of 13. Then she was like, I knew from the very first time you're not my mother. My mother will not wear that dirty scarf. So Francisca's characterization here is very interesting as well as you know hilarious because she will call Abato Papa and she will call Mita Mita instead of Mama. Francisca kind of made it as if it is Mita's, it is Mister's fault. Not to, for her not to be a real mother and it's all of their fault for them not to be a real parent so this is how the search of you know Mita's parent began by her actually the search actually began when she graduated when she received a check of 500,000 US dollars from her mother and she then began on the adventure of seeking who her mother is trying to find her on the other way around you would notice that Amita had abandoned the search for her own daughter Teresa and Christiana just to take care of Julia's daughter and once Francisca left when she's not up to age she traveled she left them then Amita began to come back to a realization that she needs to look for a daughter she needs to search for Teresa she needs to search for Christina and when she told Abato Abato first you know what did not buy the idea I said oh no don't come up with that conversation again what is past is past but you know Mita is very insistent she want to meet her daughter again well in an attempt to make this review spoiler free I will review from revealing what actually happened afterward but I'd love to leave you wanting to know if Francisca was able to find a parent if Francisca was able to find a mother and if Mita, despite all the years she had spent taking care of someone's ex-daughter, was she able to find her own granddaughter? And I need to say that I was quite sad and emotional getting to know about the death of a battle. Oh my god, it's very appalling. Abato had been taking cigarettes for a long time and sometimes Mita warned him. Now he had had an issue with lung cancer that you know took quite a lot from them. But I'm very sad to hear about the death of Abato. But I'd love to leave you in the question, you know, if Francisca actually get to meet Julia. How are they going to blend together? Is Francisca gonna love Julia as a mother like she would love Mita? Again, leaving you the veg, you wanted to find out if meet her that's part of the fact that she spent quite a lot of years training another person's daughter and lose her own husband will be able to meet her own daughter and granddaughter you know this is a quest for family reunion it is something that pulls me in and it's very emotional and also I need to talk about you know Francisca's friends and, and a art gallery and how Julia came to the art gallery and how Francisca was able to use you know art to locate a source to find history to get answers to all of her questions the book is very pulling I don't want to spoil it it is very amazing it is it is fantastically written and it is actually one of my admirable novels so far I don't want to spoil it but I want to say that I love Claudia's writing style a writing style very descriptive very figurative very pulling emotional engrossing and fantastically written I also love the characterization I love the plot twist you know once you finish a chapter it got to panting for the next chapter and you keep flipping through the book over and over until the last page is read. This is one of the amazing books I've ever read. It really owns my sister recommendation. It's a fantastic story that often got me resonating on the Argentina Dead to War. This is a book I love to make reference to in full short time. This is a book that I myself would love to go back again and pick up and read because I truly love all that Claudia has described in the book. The characterization amazing. It gets you pulling yourself, wanting to find out what has come up of the next character. If you'd love to get a copy of The Conventioners, I left a link in the description part of this review for you to get a copy directly on Amazon. And if you watch this video to this point and you're yet to click on the subscribe button, I want to urge you to please click on the subscribe button over there. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you can get notified anytime I release new videos. Thank you very much for watching my short video book recommendation of the Confessioners by Claudia Amy. See you in my next video. Goodbye.